So good morning and welcome to worship. As I hope you know, we're only online this morning because we had a COVID outbreak at our uh, Refresh Luau. And uh, <laughs> uh, many of you have COVID. Uh, I have COVID. Steve Wiley has COVID. Um, we've kind of stopped counting. There's uh, uh, but we are worshiping the Lord today, and it's so good that you're with us, and we'll be talking more about this later. Just, uh, I've been, you know, trying to find some way to could put a good spin on all of this. I'm <laughs> having a hard time finding a way to see something good in this, but here's what somebody told me just the other day, and uh, uh, I don't know, but they said, you know, we're probably all going to get COVID eventually, so if you're going to have to get it, uh, what better way to get it than at a party with friends? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if that helps or not. That's helping me right now. Uh, but we are here to worship worship God. And I'm uh, going to be sharing some music. Uh, Steve and I are going to try to do some singing. We, we, we found out uh, this morning our voices are actually going fast, but we're praying that they'll uh, maintain throughout this morning. And we were just having a hard time worshiping without singing so we're going to uh we just added this earlier this morning now the uh the chorus i think you all know or many of you know it's very easy to learn it's come worship the lord for we are his people the flock that he shepherds alleluia there's some verses steve and i'll do the verses Listen to the verses at the end of the introduction, but try to sing the chorus with us. Come, worship the Lord, for we are his people, the flock that he shepherds. Hallelujah. Come, worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 
we're going to move into a, a time of prayer. We're going to have a prayer of confession, and then uh, prayers of the people, and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together, and I'm going to move over to the pulpit uh, for that. Uh, in this prayer today, there'll be some times of silent prayer, so I will just be silent, and then that's time for you to pray quietly at home on the different topics of prayer that I'll introduce. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, this prayer of confession is based on the 23rd Psalm, and I'll pray a stanza of the Psalm, and then I'll say, let the Spirit search our hearts in silent prayer, and then we'll pause for a moment of quiet reflection and prayer. Let's pray. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. With these words, Am I saying that God provides me with everything I need? But do I really believe that? Let the Spirit search our hearts in silent prayer. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. If God is restoring my soul, why do I feel so tired, so exhausted, so run thin, so overwhelmed? Let the Spirit search our hearts in silent prayer. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Am I really living my life on the right path in every aspect of my life? Would I be comfortable or even proud to have God along with me everywhere I go and be partner in everything I do? Let the Spirit search our hearts in silent prayer. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. If that is so, then why am I always looking elsewhere for comfort and protection? Why do I have so many fears? Let the Spirit search our hearts in silent prayer. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You know, I wonder what my life would look like if I really did trust God. I wonder how I would view others, even my enemies, if I really believed God to be beside me like he promises. Let the Spirit search our hearts in silent prayer. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Am I confident that God goes with me? Am I confident that I will live with God forever? Let the Spirit search our hearts in silent prayer.
Lord, we bring all of these thoughts, all of these prayers of confession to you, knowing and believing that you are good and you are God and you hear us, Lord, and you bring mercy and forgiveness and you bring wholeness and healing and restoration. And so we thank you for that. We accept that today. We receive forgiveness and wholeness and restoration by the power of your Holy Spirit and by the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who died that we might be dead to all that is evil and alive to all that is good. Through Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Through Jesus Christ we are healed. Through Jesus Christ we are made new. Amen. And Lord, we continue to pray and we lift up our world to you. We lift up unrest and inflation. We lift up inequities. We lift up the poor. We lift up those who are struggling with war. We lift up those who are trapped in severe weather. Lord, we lift up our missionaries who are in Africa and China and Europe and other missionaries around the world. Lord, we lift up our local community. We pray for our local leaders and officials in our city, in our county, in our state. We pray for the Compassion Network that we're a part of. Help us to care like you care and to love like you love and to get involved in our community. And Lord, we lift up our church today. We pray for all of those who contracted COVID, uh, either at the Luau or actually the next day on Sunday, especially our older members who have COVID. We pray for those who are still struggling and um, experiencing symptoms. We just ask for quick healing and refreshment, Lord. And we pray for Diane Bauman as her her continued recovery from her kidney surgery. We lift up Bill Klein, uh, recovering from a heart attack and having stents put in, and he's home and resting. We pray for healing and recovery for him. We pray for Bonnie Coleman, who is going for surgery on Monday. We ask that you would be with her, that she'd have a quick recovery and all would go well. And there are other things, Lord, that we do not know about, but you know about today, things that we mention in our hearts before you, and we ask for you to have your way and your will. We always ask for your healing and for the power of your presence and your love. And we pray together the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, so glad that you've joined us online today. We're going to have a few announcements. Uh, Our Zoom Bible study is still going on. Uh, COVID could not stop that. It's just like it can't stop Sunday morning worship. Uh, So the Zoom is happening on Wednesdays at 7 to 8, and we go through the 23rd Psalm, uh, every uh, every verse of it, uh, before I preach on it, and that actually is just great conversation and really helps me as uh, we learn a lot together and grow together and informs my message for Sunday. Uh, If you need to order script, you can still get a hold of Kathy Belden by texting her, calling her, or emailing her. Uh, Tithes and offerings, even though you're not here today, you can still send in your tithes and offerings. uh, Just mail it to the church or through bill pay on your bank or you can go right to our website right now to tithely.com and give your offering as many of you know uh, i'm going to be retiring at the end of the year and we have a search committee and they are working really hard and making monthly reports to us and so steve wiley has a report for us this morning and so if steve can push all the right buttons and uh, get up here he'll Share that with us. All right, good morning. It's uh, 
Good to see all you folks out on Facebook. I, I can see the comments on my computer back there, and it's just uh, you're welcoming each other and sharing things, Lord. I, I, don't I just thank you for that. But uh, the search team, we've come, we're it's like that close to the next milestone. So we, we, the profile is, f is together for the most part. There's some little minor tweaks that we need to make to it. The consistory has seen it and read through it and uh, given comments. Uh, it's like a, there's th those are the few little tweaks, but as soon as that's done, we have uh, uh, a long list of places to, p to post that. So we will hopefully uh, later next week begin posting it. Uh, it'll be on our web page. So we're looking forward to uh, going to the next step in this process. So that's, that's where we're at. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Steve, and really glad the profile is done and will be out there online. The profile uh, describes our church and what we're looking for in a pastor, and it goes to all the different sites where pastors are looking to find churches. And so we need to be praying now that God brings uh, the right pastor together with our church as, as the profile goes out. So I, we have a video we're going to see, and this is uh, our scripture reading for today. It's really a song. It's a musical version of the 23rd Psalm, and we are featuring Ron's paintings that he did in 2011 when we went through the 23rd Psalm before, and uh, we'll be actually looking at this probably every Sunday now through the end of this series. It's a little bit longer than some of the videos we use in the past, but I think it's worth it to hear the whole psalm and see all the pictures. So, Steve, are you ready to put that on? All right. It's the word of the Lord. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet. Pastures green, he leadeth me, the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Within the past. Of righteousness, even for his own name's sake. Within the paths of righteousness, even for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk through death's dark veil. Yet will I feel none For thou art with me and thy rod and staff me comfort still. For thou art with me and thy rod and staff me comfort.
The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. And doesn't that sound wonderful? I mean, just picture a meadow uh, like the one Ron painted for today's picture. You know, green and lush. Um, there's clover. Uh, there's, you can't qu quite see it, but there's a honeybee there. Uh, the sun is shining. And uh, over to the right, uh, there's a little spring-fed pond where there's quiet water. It's the good life. You know, uh, man, do, do you know that old hymn, uh, It Is Well? It is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Quiet meadows, still waters. You know, I think it's really strange, at least it hit me as strange, is that we have this passage about quiet waters and green pastures uh, to preach on and look at when the last two weeks have been two of the busiest and craziest weeks uh, I've had in a long time. I don't know about you, but you know, two weeks ago, it was all about getting ready for the luau. Remember, this luau was two years in the making. We canceled it because we didn't think it was safe. We finally thought it was safe. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, but, you know, two weeks ago, all the last minute stuff, everybody working to decorate, you know, coordinating the music, getting the food together, uh, getting the auction items and everyone helping with that. And then August 20th came, the date that will rest in infamy, where, you know, we had a great time. But then Monday morning came. And we had COVID. And I don't have an exact count of everyone that had got infected, but I'm beginning to think it's the rare person who attended who did not get infected. So then it was Monday. It was getting tested. It was getting to the doctor. It was trying to rest, trying to be uh, quiet as we're, you know, texting our friends and making sure who's okay and who has it and who doesn't and then uh, I I isolated in the spare bedroom because I had it and Shannon didn't at first that changed later but I'll just let you know that being isolated in the spare bedroom was not my idea of lying down in green pastures and being beside quiet waters I, I will say it was a time alone with God I was seeking restoration for my soul and I know that many of us had a similar Weak, didn't you? <laughs> yes, we did. And I'm praying that for all of us that were infected and dealt with the symptoms, that you also connected with the Lord. And in your isolation, you found some restoration. Uh, you know, but forced quarantine, it's not the best way to have time alone with God. It's not the only way to have time alone with God. But, this is what I want to talk about today, time alone with God is necessary. It's necessary for our health. It's necessary for our well-being. You know, not just our spiritual health and well-being. You know, that's what we think about with this psalm. Oh, yes, for our spiritual health, for our spiritual well-being. But I would say our mental health, our emotional health, and I'd, I'd even add our physical health and our social health, our social well-being. I believe that all those parts of our being, you know, our mind, body, soul, and spirit, that's what's being addressed when the God and the Bible speaks about one's soul. And we're talking about the soul today, and there's a lot of different opinions of what the soul is. You know, soul is a somewhat ambiguous, abstract term. Uh, no one's found a way to measure the soul. You can't see your soul. You can't smell your soul. Uh, some say it's just a life force. Others say it's your psyche. Uh, I tend to believe that it's the core you. It's the real you. Your soul is the point at which all your parts, mind, body, social, heart, will, spirit, all your parts, they connect and they coordinate in the soul. 
hopefully they connect as one. You know, Dallas Willard, in his book, Renovation of the Heart, which I highly recommend, uh, he says the soul is that in us which combines all the dimensions of the person to form one life. Let me say that again. It is that in us which combines all the dimensions of the person to form one life. So we do well when it is well with our soul, when all of our parts are connected and we are loving God with all our parts, our heart, mind, and strength. And when we're loving our neighbor as ourself, and then we're a unified soul. But when we are disconnected, and body and spirit and heart and mind are in conflict, and they're fighting each other for dominance, it is not well with our soul. You know, Psalm 42 asks, asks this question. Psalm 42 asks, why so downcast, O my soul? And that's what I want to, that's what we're talking about this morning, is how is your soul? How is your soul this morning? Is it well with your soul? You know, the first verse in that old hymn, It's Well With My Soul, goes like this. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Now it's easy to see how it can be well with your soul when you're by the still waters, right? <laughs> when peace like a river attendeth my way, sure, easy to be well with your soul. But what about when sorrows like sea billows roll, when the storms of life hit hard, like catching COVID at a church party? Can you still say it's well with my soul? You know, I'm not going to go into it actually in the message today, but you might want to just uh, search on the internet for the story behind it is well with my soul. The author of this hymn just went through a terrible, terrible tragedy with his family. And uh, when he says, whatever my lot, he had a, just tragic happenings. But in that, he was able to say, it's well with my soul. It's worth searching for and looking for. You know, in our Zoom Bible study, one of uh, the participants in the study said that in her Chinese Bible, the phrase, restores my soul, is translated something like, wakes up my soul. I like that. I like that a lot because a well soul is an awake soul, a soul that's alert, a soul that's refreshed, a, a soul that knows what's going on. I like that. He wakes up my soul. It would be something like, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He wakes up my soul. I like it because in Psalm 42, when it asks that question, why so downcast, O my soul, it gives an answer. Do you know the answer? Let's look at the passage. Psalm 42, verse 5. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Answer, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. It's like, wake up, O oh my soul, and remember that your hope is in God. Wake up, O oh my soul, remember, he's your shepherd. You lack nothing. You know, we, we all want the Lord to bring us peace and well-being to our souls, don't we? I mean, haven't you been asking for that all week? Lord, bring me some peace. Bring me some well-being. And we want that. And the Lord often does that. I mean, he just, you know, you know what it's like. He just drops his peace down on us. You know, the peace that passes all understanding. In the midst of a hard time, he drops his peace on us. And you just get that sense of God's love and God's care. You get that reassurance of his provision and his strength, and you just, you know, I know that he's with me in this. I know he's with me. You know, but it hit me that in this passage, the Lord isn't bringing the quiet waters to the sheep. Think about this. He's leading the sheep to the green pastures 
to the quiet waters. He's leading us. He's leading the sheep from here to there. Now, what's the difference between dropping restoration, dropping uh, assurance, dropping his peace on us, or leading us to his peace? Well, there's, there's a big difference. Leading implies that we need to follow. If he's leading us to the quiet waters, if he's leading us to the green pastures, we need to follow him to that peaceful place where our souls will be awakened and restored. So when we seek God's guidance and we follow on the path he's put before us, he's leading us to green pastures. He's leading us to quiet waters. I think way too often we stay on our own path and go our own way and we say, Lord, bring us peace because everything's going wrong. And God will do that sometimes, but he wants so much more in our lives than rescue. He wants us to make it a habit of following him to the quiet green pasture, a habit of getting away, a habit of finding restoration. You know, on Wednesday night, we watched a video, and it's a little too long to show here, but the video was from a shepherd that showed two ways that a sheep can be made to lie down. One way was when the sheep was forced to lie down, and here we have a picture of uh, the shepherd's tackled the sheep, he's holding the sheep down, and he's clipping the sheep's hoofs. And the shepherd said, sometimes we just got to force the sheep, tackle it, push it to the ground. It, the sheep hates it, but we've got to do it because they're sick and they need treatment or they need to have their hoofs clipped. But he said the other way to have a sheep lie down is to lead it to a safe spot, a spot that's you know, free from pests where there's plenty of room to sprawl out, spread out after feeding so that the sheep can relax and chew their cud. And the point I'm trying to make and the shepherd was making is that this type of laying down, it's a regular part of the sheep's routine. Resting beside the still water, uh, chewing their cud, you know, is, is the way they properly digest their food. Uh, digestion actually is pretty labor-intensive for a sheep because they're ruminators, they're cud chewers. Uh, you know, they've got to bring it up and chew it and swallow it and do that several times. And uh, I've read that it can take anywhere from four to 14 hours a day of chewing the cud. The Lord wants us to follow him in regular times of drawing apart for ruminating, for spiritual cud chewing. You know, and when I think about it, Maybe that's why Sabbath keeping is one of God's top ten commandments. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Now here's a quote from the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. You know, just like we can only go so long without sleep and physical rest, just like we can only go so long without eating and slowing down and digesting, just like we can only go on with so much living and doing and busyness before we need a Sabbath. We need rest our souls, slowing down, pondering, ruminating on life and the things of God. It is a good, normal, and necessary part of the Christian life. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He wakes up my soul. You know, rest simply trusting God and doing nothing, it's really hard for us, for many of us, especially as Americans, because so much of our identity revolves around doing and going. And 
this activity and that activity. And Psalm 46 is another place that tells us this. It says, be still and know that I am God. It, it's a command. It's like, be quiet. Settle down. Slow down. Get over it. And know that God is God. Many ways, that's, you know, many, many ways throughout the Scripture we're taught that there's a necessity for rest and contemplation. But because of our busyness, we haven't figured that out yet. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess to this, and you probably could too, um, the command to keep the Sabbath, a day of rest, is probably the command of all the Ten Commandments that we break most often. And I would say without a second thought, we break it all the time. And I would also say that we pay the price for that in our, in our souls. You know, Jesus told us, he said that human beings were not made for the good of the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for the good of human beings. Because the good shepherd knows that to be healthy, whole sheep, we need to lie down in green pastures. We need to sprawl out beside still waters. We need to refresh our souls. He's the shepherd. We are the sheep of his pasture. And he desires that we lie down. He desires that we lie down. He commands us to lie down. He makes us to lie down sooner or later if we don't lie down on our own. So I want to encourage all of us in three things from this passage this morning. The first is make the time to be still and quiet. And I want to encourage us in, in that vein. So this is about the two things about making the time to be still and be quiet. The first is take Sabbath days and rest. The world is not going to fall apart because you take a day off. It really won't. God gave each of us a precious spirit, a precious mind, a precious body, a precious soul, and we need to take care of them. And rest is a huge part of taking care of our being that God has given us. But I will say it takes planning. You know, you need to schedule it. You need to put it on your calendar. It won't happen by itself. But the idea of Sabbath, it doesn't have to be Sunday. It doesn't have to be Saturday. But it's the idea is to take off a day, at least a day a week. You know, it's God's law. God tells us to do it. And we break that law all the time. It's about time we stopped. It's about time we got serious and started to rest. The other idea with this is not just Sabbath, but on a regular basis, find time to be alone with God. Uh, maybe it's daily. Uh, maybe for five minutes. Uh, maybe it's with your morning coffee in God. But don't make God force you to lie down to clip those hoofs. You know, we, we're social beings. We need time together with others in God, but we also need time of being alone with God. We're social, but we're also solitary. Both sides are important for a healthy soul. So I just encourage you, find some time. Maybe you, not, it's not a whole day. It's just a little part of the day to wake up your soul, be alone with God, with no phone, with no friends, with no TV, just you and God. So make the time to be still and quiet. The second thing is ruminate on Scripture. Take a verse. Don't try to conquer the you know, whole scriptural world. Take one verse and chew on it for a while. For the day, for a week. Write it on a card. Put it on your phone. You know, put it on the fridge. Tape it to your mirror. Whatever works. But just chew on a passage. Ruminate on it. Stay in it. Digest it. Think about it. Think about it again. Think about it again. You know, in the discipleship groups, we call that soaking in Scripture. But in the context of this psalm, it's ruminating in Scripture, chewing on Scripture. And then the third thing I want to encourage all of us in is to trust God. You know, and that's what it really comes down to. If we trust God, he, we can lie down in the green pasture. The green pasture is lush, it's rich, it's full of food, there's more than enough. 
to go around. God is not stingy. There are deep waters. We can drink deep. We can drink often. We can eat the grass. And we can stay away from all the God's substitutes. You know, Jesus told the woman at the well, I have water that you know not of, that if you drink this water, you'll never have to drink again because it comes from a well of water springing up to eternal life. See, only a lamb that trusts, only a lamb that is secure in his or her shepherd can rest in the Lord because that lamb knows that predators are warded off. That lamb knows that food is going to be found that day and the next day and the next day. That lamb knows water will be provided. When a lamb, and shepherds say this, when a lamb is secure, that lamb can rest and chew its cud. A lamb who knows the shepherd has all the wisdom and knowledge about life, the shepherd knows what the good life is, the shepherd knows what the best life is, that lamb can spend its time chewing on the words of that shepherd, meditating, ruminating, valuing the shepherd's words more than any other words, digesting the word of God. And that lamb knows that her shepherd has more than enough, so that lamb can be generous. That lamb can live in the shepherd's abundance and share with others. That lamb can reproduce without fear. That lamb can invite and welcome other lambs to the flock because that lamb knows there's more than enough to go around. Be still. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture, and he makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Just one last comment before we close off our time together today is that this verse and all the verses that follow in the rest of this psalm, they are, each one of them, a profound word picture of what life looks like for the sheep that trusts the shepherd. Pictures of what the life looks like for the sheep that believes that the Lord is his shepherd and he shall not want. Is the Lord your shepherd today? I hope so. He, he's always willing for another sheep to come into the flock, so talk to him if, if, you're not, if you're not sure. He gave his life that you could be part of his flock. Is the Lord your shepherd then lie down in the grass. Is the Lord your shepherd? Then drink deep. Is the Lord your shepherd? Eat well. Is the Lord your shepherd? Rest in him. Enjoy the quiet. Let him wake up your soul. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we do lift up again everyone who is still suffering the ill effects of the COVID infection. And I just pray for safety and healing and that it would all be over soon that we don't spread this any further look forward to worshiping again in person next sunday on communion sunday so keep us safe keep us well help us get those negative uh, covid tests this week and get together next week in the sanctuary and lord uh, thank you th that steve could help out today and for uh, who he is and all he does to minister and care for the church as an elder in our church. Again, we lift up the search committee as they move forward and pray for that wonderful connection that's going to happen. So we're looking forward to that. And be with all of us that we might be trusting, generous, sharing, caring sheep who can relax and rest in the goodness of God and refresh our souls. In Jesus' name, go in peace. Amen.
just.